Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name's Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and property investor and in today's video we're talking about the house prices growth that has continued to absolutely smash all my expectations anyway. And we're going to talk a little bit about why that might be. And we're going to look at inflation, which is currently predicted at 6% this year. Now if we're looking at a growth this month of 0.5%, well annualised, that would be 6%. So maybe there's something to do with inflation and we'll be able to go into that in a bit of detail during this video. But guys, before we get stuck into it, before we give you all this information if you could give this video a big like you know we don't owe any upsell on here I'm not trying to sell your course all we ask is you give it a big like and that helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't already considered subscribing why not consider subscribing we're able to give all this information completely impartially on the basis that we don't try and sell your course so guys let's get stuck into it I'm also going to reveal how much I've made from this house price because you can probably guess I've got three million plus quids worth of property it's gone up a bit since July last year so we'll go into that as well. So let's start off with the headlines and I'll put a little image up from the Halifax up there, it's going to be up there somewhere, um, and you can see that the average house price in the UK has reached an absolute record of £278,123. Now that is a complete record, it's the highest it's ever been and this is two consecutive months this year so far of growth. So we continue in 2022 as 2021 left off with absolute record numbers coming through from every part of the country. Now I've got two thought processes on this. Number one, has house prices become worth more or has your money just become worth less? And we'll go into that in a little bit of detail in a minute. Now monthly the change is 0.5%, so half a percent. That for me meant that my property portfolio rose by £15,938 this month and that means that I'm currently sitting at £3,200 and 3,581. And for anyone who's new to this channel, I basically started with about £3 million worth of property in July. Obviously that's not where I started, I started with my first house in 2010. But in July of 2021, that's roughly what my portfolio was worth. And what we started doing was just tracking how much it's become worth over time. And it's really interesting, it's gone up by nearly £200,000 in the last nine months. It's an amazing growth. And that is obviously a assuming that none of the regional variances and different types of property and all that sort of stuff, which is hard for me to do on a granular level, but this gives you a good idea of how property prices increase over time. Now, Feb 2020 to Feb 2022, we had 16% growth in property prices. And from January 2021 to January 2022, 10.8%, which is the fastest annualized growth since 2007. So there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. Basically, what we're saying is during a period of absolute crisis, when people were told to stay at home, we managed to grow property values by 16%. Now in my mind there's only one way we did that, we printed a lot of money. Now the other thing to say is in 2007 we did what? We printed a lot of money and house prices grew at a rapid rate. And the question I have to you and to myself is, is this the beginning or is this the end? And my gut is saying this is the beginning. This is as we start to come out of it. Because if you look at house prices since 2007 onwards, they really have grown exponentially. There's a few things that have come up in my mind and from a bit of research, which leads me to think that we're not anywhere near the end of this yet. Number one, you know, Habito have just launched a seven times income mortgages. So that means you can borrow seven times your annual salary. HSBC and Halifax have just risen their rates from they used to be able to borrow 4.5 times and it's now five and a half times your salary. So banks are already getting used to the fact that we're going to have to lend people more money. Again, the question comes back to, is it that your money became worth less or is it that properties became more valuable? I think there's no question that your money has become worth less. We printed a record amount of money in the last two years and it should be no surprise that the Bank of England are saying that inflation is currently running around about 6% or well, that's what they're suggesting by spring and that's before the Ukraine crisis really kicked off and we all know what's happening with oil prices and everything else and I don't want to belittle the fact of the humanitarian disaster it's absolutely heartbreaking watching any of that on TV um, but this is a finance channel so I have to bring it back to the finance and ultimately oil prices have gone up stock markets have come down there's lots and lots of pain that's gonna be felt economically
economically, globally from this. And I think that's going to feed into these inflation numbers, you know. And it might mean that we're not able to raise interest rates as quickly as the household squeeze comes on. I think it's a very dangerous and difficult place for policymakers to be in. For us as investors and for me as an investor, what does it mean? I mean, first of all, obviously, I want to say this again. My heart goes out to everyone in Ukraine. It's appalling. But when we look at our property prices, I think it can only really continue in one way. There's still so much money out there. People are still able to spend. And with banks allowing you to borrow more, this is just going to lead to the prices going up even further. Add in the fact that the government invested with help to buy 5% mortgages, all this stuff where they've guaranteed huge amounts of money. It's cheaper to allow things to inflate than it is to pay that debt. So I think house prices have still got a long way to go. Let's look forward and think about it if inflation was to run at 6% through 2022. Well, what would happen to house prices? Even for them to stay at their current level, in real terms, they would have to rise by 6%. Let me bring out my calculator. I'm just going to work that out. It's um... So you're looking at an average rise of 16500 on this property price just to keep in pace with inflation. I think that's a huge rise. I, th I think another 6% on top is an amazing opportunity for anybody. And the reason it's an amazing opportunity when we look at property prices isn't necessarily if you bought in cash. I don't think in cash that's looking that good because the value of the money has devalued by 6%. You may no net growth. But if you borrowed money at 2 or 3% and then you rented it out and somebody else paid that mortgage, well actually the debt has deflated away so you've paid off 6% by the value of the debt becoming worth less and your assets inflated by 6%. It breaks my heart to say it. A crisis globally could lead us to making a lot of money in the property market, but ultimately, I think with more people coming into the UK, it's been documented, I think 200,000 people are due to arrive in the coming months from Ukraine. Houses are going to be in even more demand. So ultimately, I think house prices are probably going to continue on their current trajectory. Now, guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. And please don't think me callous or anything like that for having this. I've got a family myself. I've got four children. And honestly, when you see some of those images, it absolutely breaks my heart. But I want to bring it back to the financials because that's what we discuss on this channel. So hopefully I've done that in a way that doesn't feel too callous. Guys, I thank you so much for watching this. See you on the next one. Take care and like and subscribe as always. Thank you. Thank you.